to hell with it. Meep, meep. It was just like a big hug of an episode. Full of wham, bam, flash, 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 flash. It was really, really exciting. Having like grown with the sort of 2005 era, when you see two favourite Doctors and Companions together again, um, I thought it was really enjoyable. It was like coming home in a way. He's, he's doing pretty much exactly what I expected him to do. It's very much more, more RTD, but I like RTD, so it's more of the same. You can't really complain of that. I can. You can complain. <laughs> could, could please complain away. It felt very Disney Plus mandated to have that introduction <laughs> at the beginning of um, yeah. of David Tennant floating in space, talking to you directly about what the script has been yeah, 15 years ago. I want to complain about Murray Gold's intro tune to like the title sequence. Just let someone else other than Murray Gold do the title sequence. He doesn't like the Doctor Who theme. Let someone else do do it who loves it. I am the Doctor. I am this person who knows Donna Noble. Here's Donna Noble. I am Donna Noble. Donna Noble was in the show in 2008. I love the new opening sequence, but I think the PNG, the logo at the end, looks very bad. David Tennant was brilliant as the 14th Doctor, older, slightly wiser, but still essentially they've got that 10th vigour and vim. I do just see the 10th Doctor with it. I don't really see anything different. Um, a couple of little moments there where he does feel like he's his own new character, but I just do see a repeat of 10. I think we're finally going to get a closure, because I think when he yeah. left in late 2009, 2000, early 2010, a lot of us were um, quite upset about that. It's interesting to see how he gets on with the new Donna, as it were. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting seeing Donna still noticeably Donna, but she had developed in a way that I thought was believable for the character having had 15 more years in the world. Proper tiger mummy in the episode, and I actually really enjoyed that really protective... Again, it's, it's a development of the character, but uh, an inline development, like she would kick... If, if you were a mum and she, you scoop with the kids, she would kick your ass. I know friends who've said in the past he's, he's not very good, he's kind of like not good at writing necessarily the older women and kind of making mothers quite shrill and harpy and kind of horrible like Sylvia was. But he completely redeemed that there because he made Donna into this mother bear figure of my daughter is protected at all costs and Sylvia in turn has got my daughter's protected at all costs and my granddaughter's protected at all costs. Sylvia and all her. <laughs> You, 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 and slap. Oh, you know, fabulous. Like, you know that, that trope that happens in reality as well as in, in fiction sometimes, I think, that like a toxic parent mellows with age, and then oh. someone who's like a the, the really sort of overbearing or strict mother becomes this really gentle, lovely grandmother. Um, so it seems that she's that. I mean, obviously she did kind of slip up a bit in terms of like Rose's pronouns, but she was trying. I think Sylvia is probably one of the most rounded characters in New Who. She was trying to be a good mother to her daughter and a good grandmother to her granddaughter, but she had the the on she had the on eggshells thing for both of them for different reasons. And I thought the fact that the show didn't really acknowledge that, as in she wasn't quite sure how to deal with having a trans granddaughter, but she, she was trying. But also, she didn't know how to deal with Donna having a whole chunk of her life that she could never remember. And I thought, you know, there was a similarity between those two things. There's that sense of, I need to protect Rose, I don't want to hurt her, and yeah. that, I have to say that was great, because you can Im kind of imagine Sylvia as a Daily Mail we did before, really. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And she kind of she's, got past that. She's maybe moved to the independent, perhaps now, reading that on her iPad I, online. Sylvia said, she said the doctor, yeah. and then she immediately turns to Rose, mm -hmm. Um, and trying to get her to safety. Mm -hmm. the, I okay. think that bit of acting there is her going, oh no. Oh, oh no. She just it's, mentioned the doctor's she name. Gonna She's going to remember him. Yeah. I am not losing my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I may lose my daughter, but there's no way I'm yeah. going to lose my granddaughter. Yeah. 
I thought that was brilliant. Yep, I picked acting. up on that as well. It was really good. We had missed that level of enjoyment about people in the show. Like we yes. had, you know, we've had families in the Chibnall era, but I can't remember a thing about Yaz's family or how that was. There was a sister. Was. I yeah, think that was so much it. I just wish that Rose would actually join the Doctor in the TARDIS, that would be yeah. really, really, really good. Yeah, yeah I love that. I, 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 felt, I felt like she didn't have as much screen time as I was expecting. She was a great addition. I loved her, like, story. I loved the, the fact that, like, she, um, because, like, the whole bullying and, like, she felt out of place and then, like, she had that resolution at the end. I loved all of that. Because she's called Rose and this is, like, the new era, I kind of thought she might play the same type of role in the story as Rose Tyler. I just want to see more of Rose now as well. Her perspective was kind of decentered. It was a lot more about the Doctor's experience yeah. and Donna's experience. Also with, with the bullies now, I've had chats with yeah. like my trans yeah. pals who are like not the best about this because it's the dead naming which yes. feels... But having yeah. that portrayed so that it can be called out and having Donna say that I, I will descend upon you. Yes, absolutely. That, that's, that's the response that people would be wanting to have when they're in that bullied situation. Yeah, it's like the idea of shining the hate, the shining the, the light on the hate. All the transphobic stuff was put into the mouths of villains and dickheads and you knew that so that's fine. I'm really hoping that the trans person is like a genderqueer trans woman like me, like a non-binary trans woman would be lovely. Um, well, I, I know um, uh, Yasmin Finney plays Rose is, 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 is a, trans, a trans woman. I'm not sure. Is she genderqueer? I actually don't know, actually. Possibly. I'm not entirely sure. Do you, do you guys know? I have not heard that term no one knows. either about her, but who knows? Beat the meat turn or twist, I didn't see coming. I love the meat. Obviously, this has been like, well, 40 years in the making for them, I suppose, since 1980, I think, is when the Starbeast comic came out. So many of us have like, they need to be on screen. They, they, they need, need to, to be, be on screen. And they have. And they nailed it. And it was a disappointment and a bonus as well because I'm sitting there with a smirk on my face going, I know what's coming, I know what's going to happen, but at the same time, I wish I didn't. Looks like Grogu is going to have some competition mm -hmm. with some merchandising. merchandising. I think I, I'm really impressed by the prosthetics and the, uh, the, the, the yeah, animatronics of it all. Ah. I generally thought it was CGI at first. The fact that it was like a mixture of both things is really impressive. To hell with it. Uh, oh, to hell with this. Uh, I am going to kill London to get off this rotten planet and feast on humans. I, lo I love when they were cute. They got more boring when they got evil, but I love like just, oh no, you're killing them when they like took out the softs. You pull their tummies out. <laughs> Miriam Margulies was absolutely fantastic as always. I mean, she started off all very, very sweetness and light. And then she got, Baby, rrr, my rrr, friend, rrr, rrr, please. And then she just went for it, which, having the comic strip. Yes. <laughs> She's a natural treasure and I, I, I love her. So any, I have no idea who she is. Oh, you're, you're in for a treat then, when you find out about her rest, rest of her work. She's so unashamedly, you know, just the so, so breath of, she's, 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 she's a big powerhouse lesbian who hates the Tories and she's not afraid to tell, say that. She, she, she's a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. And, and she happily farts whenever she wants and doesn't care. They could have just brought Donna back and left it at that. But they have to brought Dr. Donna back, which was nicer. And it was lovely to see Dr. Donna again because that absolutely broke my heart the first time. Yeah. I sobbed buckets when Donna got that all taken away from her. So to get it back. Well, I was ready to sob again because at that scene when she's lying there yeah, you think after she's the dead. best 55 yeah. seconds of her life, I thought that it was time as well and I was gushing as well again. It was really good that we weren't traumatised <laughs> by any potential um, death early on in the season. The idea that they shared this genetic bond of the Metacrisis thing, to me, worked so well for that reason, because yeah. it's the idea that mother and daughter share cells, and because of that, she was able to kind of survive anything because she had this daughter that she loved very, very much and she wanted to protect her at all costs. I just wish Donna had been, when she finally gets her memories back, had been a bit more, you know, there wasn't enough surprise in it coming mm. from her, I didn't think. I think there should have been a bit more of surprise on her. Oh, I know who you are and mm. oh, I remember this and oh, I'm back. and. And I almost half expected to say, where the hell have you been? Mm -hmm. They kind of wound in the whole binary, 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 binary thing into the non-binary mm. line for Rose. I think it's great that they have like explicitly stated now that the Doctor is non-binary. However, yep. 
right after establishing that the Doctor is non-binary and Rose is non-binary, so you've just put these two non-binary characters on screen, which is such an important piece of representation. Yeah. Immediately afterwards, there's this really weird bit of dialogue where they're shoved back into a binary. I really liked, you know, Dora and her daughter having that energy shared. Uh -huh. it, that in its own right yeah. was a fine enough resolution to the Meta Doctor uh -huh. Donna issue. I don't quite get how the let it go bit worked. <laughs> yeah, no, no. As a woman, I'm not sure we can do that. No. I'm not sure I can just let it go. Sh shake off your regeneration energy. The, the trans stuff to make the resolution was the worst part of it because it was just very hand wavy. Mm. And I'm very tense about that because why did the worst part of the episodes have to be about being trans? Mm. It made no sense. <laughs> I'm not sure it makes sense. It didn't make sense. That bit didn't make sense. No. I, I think RTD had this heart in the right place. I think it's really good, a positive trans representation. But I do think the way it was implemented in the story was, I guess, a bit clumsy, a little bit. I think mostly it was two things. One, like you brought up before, the whole thing that. Uh, Rose only kind of feels like fully themselves, like they're fully transitioned after they like, expel the, the regeneration energy. So you're like, whoa, 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 hang on. So, so you only fully transition if you have time lord energy, and a bit of time having a time lord makes you that possible. You, you weren't able to do that before. R Russell, bless him, he means well. Um, he does. He's coming from a good place. I'm not sure he's all that up with it. Like, you know, Rose, oh, she's like, you're not trans because your mum. <laughs> Because your mum absorbed Time Lord energy, <laughs> you're just trans because you're trans. If he'd, like, if he'd written that, oh, a gay person, he would never have written it because he would realise that's not, you don't need an explanation as to why you're trans, you just are. But a male presenting Time Lord can never understand, and I'm like, but hang on a minute, you just said that the Doctor is non-binary and now you're saying that because they're male presenting, they can't understand this like I, womanly essence and i think that's really problematic I, actually yeah you're right I, I i didn't i didn't really like that either i honestly that that honestly sounded like something chris chibnall would have written i yeah I, it doesn't make sense to me the way that like why would a male presenting time lord not realize that mm. relinquishing their time lord's energy mm. Makes them survive, right? Surely anyone, regardless of the gender, would realize how to survive. If, if, uh... You know, the, the male presenting part at the end of it, I was like, that was a bit uncalled for personally. And that's, that's because I'm, that's because I'm a male myself, I guess, is probably a reason. But I felt like in, that was a bit weird and uncalled for in the episodes. It feels like a very clumsy line, I think. So it applies to a number of kind of weird, problematic things for me. We're talking about how they're, ma they're male presenting, but literally, I, I don't know how long it's been since they were generated, but a little bit before that, they were a woman. And also, their presentation doesn't necessarily define what their gender identity is, because the doctor, again, they didn't even choose to have that face with those clothes back. That just happened to them. And in their mind, because of the psychic paper is gendering them as a woman, they still think of themselves as a woman. Exactly, yeah. Your, your outward expression doesn't determine what your gender identity is. It just, it's off to me. It's very binarist and it seems very It didn't feel right. It's the opposite of what the episode was, like, trying to do. I like how RTD's trying. And, you know, he may not get it right and he probably should, like, employ trans people to, like, consult on shit about trans people, but, you know, whatever. He does mean it well, but as I say, I just don't know he quite grasps the nuances of... Like, I don't think he's on Tumblr. Um, so I don't think he's at the forefront of, you know, kind of trans activism and, you know, kind of the... He's got, the, you know, the lingo down pat, but I think... His heart's in the right place, so, you know. I'm very happy that RTD is failing in the right direction, whereas, <laughs> our, whereas Chibnall was just... Was failing, yeah. There's also that aspect of there was a lot of really good disabled representation. The idea yeah. of the scientific advisor mm -hmm. and the battle wheelchair. Yes. My God. <laughs> unit, the unit scientific advisor who's in the wheelchair and then she crosses her legs just to let people know that not everyone in a wheelchair doesn't have use of their legs. That's, you know, I thought that was quite nicely done. You kind of go stills and stuff and they make like a thing about it or it's like a whole new thing, but I like that because you don't get to see that in a lot of stuff anymore. I, I, I love the wheelchair, the wheelchair was awesome. Yeah, great. I mean, there was things like, like the unit guy who didn't have the helmet because he was a Sikh. Brilliant, fantastic. Having a, a screwdriver can do barriers now and teleport and do whatever, I think makes them a little bit too overpowered at points. 
I give up. <laughs> I give up. You may as well just call it a Sonic Swiss Army knife at this point. I, I know what you're gonna. I know what you're gonna say. I'm happy about it, but it also annoys me that they can't just keep it as a bloody screwdriver. No, I know it's a plot device, and it always has been a plot device to move the plot on and keep the story moving. But what the f the idea with the seals? You know, he did the thing and made the force field, which, you know, where was that bloody feature of the last 60 years? But anyway. I will say they could have done they had to put the down, really. They've also turned it into like. I've got any feeling about where the doctor drawn green. When he puts the shields on both sides to get him, Donna, Rose, Sean, Sylvie, and the Meep to safety, only one of the sides was damaged, and that was the soldiers. So that was kind of a bit of foreshadowing mm -hmm. to yeah. maybe things I mean, are not always seen. Yeah, I, I agree. You want to imagine the Doctor as someone you could be just taking down the bad regimes, but then yeah. it's like, okay, the Doctor can just do all this weird sh I guess they are just an incredibly powerful alien, and it <laughs> subtracts from it that you can't be like, oh, a human could just do this. <laughs> God, you could see the money on the screen. I mean, like the bit where they, they overfly of the, the fight on the street between Unit and the aliens. And it just it seems like showing off. It was like, look at it, look at it, look at the money we've spent. But I will say that um, uh, well, well, as soon as, soon as um, you know, the, the rocket ship opened and the, the ethereal sun came out, I generally thought, oh no, it's a tortured sex gas. It's come back. <laughs> the new TARDIS. <gasps> I don't like it. Oh, I love it. I'm joking. I love it. I love it. It's oh. I love the new TARDIS. In oh here. my gosh! We have the right I, things oh. back. And I love the how it harkens things. back to the <laughs> classic TARDIS, <laughs> but at the same time, it feels new. <laughs> yeah, it's got, it's the, good the, mood the, lighting. The, 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 the it's Doctor great. Disco. The Doctor Disco lights. It's, it's so fantastic. It's beautiful. Loved it's, it. And I love that. Like, there's the sort of like the crystal structure on the time rotor that harkens mm. back to you know the kind of um, the Davison um, Baker mm -hmm. and um, McCoy that kind of. Time mm -hmm. Oh, I like the new TARDIS. I, I love the staircase. It's more like modern. Part of the console, modern. But then the rest of it, retro. Oh my god. It's beautiful. But the, the round things. The round, the round things. things. I will get the dial side to the doctor. I can never remember what the f they do. Absolutely love it. It just made me break down in tears because it's just so amazing to think this console, which now looks, you know, similar to one 60 years ago, it's still here, like, it's just mental, but I absolutely love it. But I could have slapped Rachel Tallerley because just at the point where we were about to go into the TARDIS, the door was open, so you could <gasps> actually yeah. see what was what was in I, there. I kinda, and I thought, oh no. I thought it was a kind of moment, it's like, they don't know. Uh -huh. But we kind of know it's just uh, like because you look at it, you go, "Am I looking at that right?" Uh -huh. The initial thing is, you, it's like. Oh, but it would have been nice if we like, had yeah. been there with the Doctor and Donna, not seeing that the doors open, they go in. Wow. They just they have this giddy moment, and you get giddy about it as well because you feel it with them, you connect to them, and Tennant just running like crazy, round and round and round and round and round. Was a set. blast. My only issue with that is that shouldn't have been a Tennant scene. That should have been a shooting gap. I've seen that. It's his TARDIS, Terence just there for the moment. Absolutely. It really is beautiful. Fantastic. I really, really liked and it. And then it was on fire. And then it was on fire. <laughs> coffee, coffee, coffee. Spilling coffee on the panel calls it, causes it to causes it to completely shut down, really. Yeah. All, a, 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 a machine as advanced as the TARDIS that can travel in space and time can't handle a little bit of coffee, mm. really. You had all the aspects that you would love and a uh, Doctor Who episode, you had the family element, you had the action, you had the suspense, and you had the sort of cliffhanger, what's oh, going to yeah. happen next. And you know what, I think there's something to be said for an anniversary special that isn't all singing, all dancing, all self-referential, big fan wank. It's just actually a good, rolling, mad episode of Doctor Who. Yeah. It's, 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 it's brilliant to feel it. It feels back. It mm -hmm. just feels back. So. Absolutely. And yeah. can't wait to see what comes next. See. Don't forget to cl click below and subscribe to the official Doctor Who Glasgow Society YouTube channel and ring the bell for subscriptions and, and eat my salads Halloween and other various catchphrases. Carrot juice, what's that about? Whoa!
What's that? There's a, there's a fan theory that in the final episode, David Tennant's going to buy Generate and split into two, and one will be Shooty and one will be David Tennant. I hope it's not true. It's just a fan theory. I, I, someone apparently leaked it, but I, I, I'm, I'm praying it's not true because I would, I would have many issues with that. Jesus, <laughs> we pray to you now. <laughs> Please. <laughs>